قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم فبما رحمة من الله لنت لهم ولو كنت فظا غليظ القلب لانفضوا من حولك فاعف عنهم فاعف عنهم واستغفر لهم وشاورهم في الأمر My dear respected brothers and sisters Today's khutbah has been a popular request to talk about the importance of husnul khuluq, generally ethics, good morals, good values. And we see how Islam puts a high emphasis on these topics. And I hope and pray that after this khutbah, we will take this even more serious because sometimes we are failing on the most basic of adab. The most basic of Ada, the smile you give to your brother, the salam you give when you come, when you leave, saying Jazakallahu Khairan for someone who has done you a favor, being kind to your parents, to your relatives, for the youngsters here as well, to your brothers and sisters at home. I know that from school, a lot of Youngsters are always, always in some kind of dispute with their brothers and sisters. Just the basic of Adab. Just the basic of manners. In the ayah that I have recited just now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praising our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in the approximate meaning of the translation of the ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it has out of mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala O Prophet that you have been lenient lenient with them i.e. with the Sahaba, with the Muslims, with the people in general you've been lenient with them had you been cruel with them, hard-hearted they would have most certainly abandoned you they would have abandoned you so pardon them, ask Allah for forgiveness for them and consult them in conducting matters. This is about the people who were the closest with Rasulullah And in the tafasir you will read that some of the scholars say in explanation of this ayah, and this is profound, saying that they knew Aida Sahaba radiallahu anhum. They knew that you are a prophet. They knew. They were chosen. They were the ministers of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They knew that there is wahi revealed upon you, to you. They know wahi, kalamullah is coming to you. Yet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if you would have been cruel to them, 
despite Wahi coming to you, despite them knowing that you are a prophet, they would have binasil ayah, they would have abandoned you. Meaning, prophethood itself is not enough. And this is something for us. Something for us. When we do da'wah, when we invite people, our relatives, when we tell them, come to salah, when we invite them to the masajid, when we, we invite them to La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, when we try our level best, we must be patient, we must be gentle, we must do our level best that our character and our adab doesn't make them abandon us. Because this is the message. This is the message. The Prophet said, Ma min shayim yudaw fil mizan asqal asqal min husnul husnul khuluq. There is nothing heavier on the scales of the day of judgment other than husnul khuluq, good morals, good character. Wa inna sahib husnul khuluq la yablughu bihi daraja. Ya Allah. For indeed, the one who has husn al good character, may reach with his character alone the level, the status of those who are constantly, constantly in Sawm and Salah. Meaning they do nafil. You know, every week, every Monday, every Thursday, they do fasting, 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 optional fast. And Qiyamu Layl, Qiyamu Layl, Qiyamu Layl, Qiyamu Layl. The person with the Husnul Khuluq, despite maybe he doesn't, he's not fasting, he's not performing Qiyamu Layl. May Allah help us to all do you optional nafil, salah, and so on. But if not, just with your character, you may reach the level of those who are constantly in Sawm and Salah. Our beloved Prophet ﷺ also said, Aksaru. <coughs> Notice in the first hadith, Asqal, the heaviest. In this time, in this hadith, Aksar, most. Aksaru ma yudkhilu al-jannah, taqwa Allah wa husnul khulaq. Short, precise, most, amongst all the deeds, amongst all the things you can do, most, most of that which brings a person into Jannah are taqwallah, yani iman, awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, respecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, taqwa, taqwa and husnul khuluq. Good moral character, ethics, adab. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all. And here we see the link between Husnul Khuluq and the pillars of Islam. That's how important it is. That's how much emphasis Islam puts on Husnul Khuluq. Taqwa, obviously to do with the Shahada, with Iman, with La ilaha illallah. And Husnul Khuluq connected. They go together. If this knowledge and this Iman, if it doesn't show you on your action, on your interaction, on your interpersonal skills, on your emotional intelligence with other people and creations. Generally, if it doesn't show, you missed the target. <coughs> you missed the essence of La ilaha illallah, of one of the components of La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. There's a link between Husn al Khuluq and the pillars of Islam. And you can see that for every single pillar. You can see that for Salah, for example. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Salah as well. And how Salah is linked to, uh, to Husn al-Khuluq. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Uttu ma uhiya ilayka min al-kitabi wa aqimi salah Recite to them for what has been revealed to you in the kitab, in the Qur'an. Wa aqimi salah and establish salah. Why? Inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. Because salah, establishing salah, forbids one from indecency and no. An, an indecent character. There's a link 
When Allah speaks about zakah, خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَانِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَهِّرْهُمْ وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ Take, take the sadaqah, take the zakah from them, speaking to the Prophet wasallam. Take the zakah from them, why? So you can purify them. This performance of tazkiyah, you know, with inside. Again, a link to husnul khuluq. So, what did the Prophet wasallam say? In the hadith of Imam al-Bukhari, مَنْ لَمْ يَدَعَ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ وَالْعَمَلِ بِهِ فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَ فِي أَنْ يَدَعَ تَعَامَهُ وَشَعَابَ Allahu Akbar. Whoever does not give up forged speech or evil actions. Do you see Husn al-Khulat here? He's not abandoning these things so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no need for him leaving his food and his drinks. There is a link between soak and when we speak about Hajj, Allahu Akbar, Al Hajj Ashhurum Ma'lumat, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala said, Hajj is in prescribed months, and what follows? فَمَنْ فَرَضَ فِيهِنَّ الْحَجْ Whoever makes the intention to make Hajj during that time, فَلَا رَفَثَ وَلَا فُسُوقَ وَلَا جِدَالَ فِي الْحَجْ Allahu Akbar. Then when you go to Hajj, when you made that intention and you're now in a Haram and you're going for Hajj and you're visiting Baytullah and you're visiting Arafah and Mina and Muzdalifah and all of these holy places, these sacred places. For then, whoever commits to performing pilgrimage, let them stay away from intimate relations, foul language and any kind of arguments during pilgrimage, during Hajj. Again, the link between Husn al khuluq and Iman and the pillars of Islam. So I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us husn al that He gives us this ethics, the adab, something that we are missing, something that we are missing. Great time. And yes, we may be in, affected by what we see, you know, what we experience, the movies and the. And the, and the may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free us from indecent movies and. and, 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 and Speaking here of youngsters, you know, what, what, what people watch generally and what I hear, uh, music videos and all kinds of things. And don't think for a second that this is just haram because Islam, you know, says it is haram. This has an effect on you. Everything you hear, you see, you experience, has an, shapes you. Shapes you. So if you're engulfed in this kind of scenery, music, in this... These are your friends. That is the kind of language that is spoken around you all the time. And don't be surprised that you are just part of it. You're just part of it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim. Wa nafa'ana wa iyyakum bil ayati wa al-thikr al-hakim. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa nisa'ir al-muslimin. Fastaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim. الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. One of the most beautiful hadith when it comes to the emphasis of Islam with regards to حسن الخلق is the beautiful hadith about the three levels. Pay attention. Our beloved Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said أنا زعيم. I guarantee. Who? Muhammad. He said it. I guarantee what? Ana Zain bi baitin fi rawd al Jannah. Liman tarak al miraa wa in kana muhibban. Level one. I guarantee a house in the forecourt of Jannah for the one who abandons arguments, even if he's right. The right is with you. You are right. But for the sake of Allah, you stay away. You stay away. The reward? Za'im, the Prophet said, I guarantee a house, full court of Jannah for the one who abandons that kind of dispute and argument. 
You want to know level two? The hadith goes on. وَبِبَيْتٍ فِي وَسَطِ الْجَنَّةِ وَسَطِ فِي وَسَطِ الْجَنَّةِ لِمَنْ تَرَكَ الْكَذِبِ وَإِنْ كَانَ مَازِحًا Allahu Akbar. Level two. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam guarantees a house in the middle part of Jannah for the one who stops lying even if he's just joking. Just joking. And we hear that a lot. I was just joking. I was just making a joke. La <laughs> yaakhi. Don't, don't let your tongue speak things that are untrue. Kevin, lies. Even if you're just joking, stay away from it. Stay away. Reward? A house in the middle part of Jannah. Level three. <clears throat> وَبِبَيْتٍ فِي أَعْلَى الْجَنَّةِ لِمَنْ حَسَّنَ خُلَقُ And he guarantees, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi guarantees a house in the highest part of Jannah for the one who works and improves and tries to perfect, tries to perfect his character. Allah Akbar. A house in the A'la Jannah, A'la Jannah. That goes with the hadith that we said and mentioned before. That you can reach the status of those who are praying and doing nafal salah, even just with your character. And the Prophet also said in a hadith that has been narrated in Sahih Muslim, in rifqa la yakunu fi shay'in illa zana, illa zana, wa la yunza'u min shay'in illa jan. Rifq, gentleness, kindness. You know, this, 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 husnul, this gentleness, this kindness is not found in anything, but it adds beauty to it. And when it is taken away from anything, then it makes that thing def uh, defect, ugly. Everything, everything is judged by that kindness and the gentleness. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us rift. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us this gentleness and this kindness. And I want to finish with the beautiful hadith that has been narrated and reported by Abi Hurairah radiallahu an, that people came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and asked him about a lady. They said, O Messenger of Allah, a certain woman, a certain woman prays at night. Listen to the description here. She prays at night. She fasts during the day. She acts and gives sadaqah. Yani, fi zahir, what you see from her is nothing but ubudiyya. Saum, salah, sadaqa, actions, khayrat, Allahu Akbar. Then they go on, but she injures her neighbors with her tongue. She speaks ill of her neighbors. What did the Prophet ﷺ say? The Messenger of Allah ﷺ said, there is no good in her. There is no good in her. She is one of the people of Jahannam, of the fire. The hadith goes on. They said, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, inquisiting, asking more. They said, another woman <coughs> prays the prescribed prayers. Al-Fara'id, Faqat, the five daily prayers. The five daily prayers. And gives a bit of crude sadaqah, shui. Just a little bit, just some crude sadaqah. But she does not injure, she does not injure anyone. Her tongue, safe. Everyone is safe from her tongue. The Prophet, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, she is one of the people of Jannah. One of the people of Jannah. I hope and I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us realize how important this issue of husnul khuluq is. How much emphasis Islam puts on husnul khuluq. We read the Quran, this Quran, what we read in it, has to transform into our character. This is what the Prophet wasallam showed us. This is the role model. This is when Aisha radiallahu anha was asked about the Prophet's character sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She said, كَانَ خُلُقُ النَّبِي sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-Qur'an The character of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the Qur'an. 
Meaning what you find in there, he was doing it. If something is haram, he was staying away from it. Meaning that this is not just theory. It's not just words. But those words in that theory become action. So I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us the ability to read the Quran, to do all the fraud, to do much nafal as well, optional prayers and sadaqah and, and all of it, but above everything, that we make it or beautify it with the utmost and the best of characters, the best of adab, best of ethics. This is what we need to be become famous for. Not just so people say, oh, they are nice and... For the sake of Allah, for the sake of Allah, with ikhlas. May Allah subhanahu wa grant us husnul khuluq. May Allah subhanahu wa grant our children husnul khuluq. May Allah subhanahu wa help us with the adab that is required from a Muslim. May Allah subhanahu wa help our brothers and sisters around the world. Wa akthiru min as-salati wa salami ala Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fa inna man salla ala nabihi maratan wahida sallallahu alayhi bi hasha. اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وامرزقنا محبته وإتباعه ظاهرا وباطنا اللهم توفنا على ملته اللهم حشرنا في ذمرته اللهم اسقنا من حوده اللهم ادخلنا في شفاعته اللهم اجمعنا به في جنات النعيم مع الذين أنعمت عليهم من النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين اللهم ارضى عن خلفائه الراشدين أبي بكر وعمر وأثمان وعلي أفضل أتباع المرسلين اللهم اللهم ارض عن الصحابة أجمعين وعن التابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم ارض عنا معهم بمنك وكرمك يا رب العالمين اللهم اصلح ولاة مولى المسلمين اللهم ولي علينا خيارنا ولا تولي علينا شعارنا اللهم انصر إخواننا وأخواتنا المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم انصرهم في بورما وانصرهم في الصين وانصرهم في كاشمير والهند وسريلانكا وانصرهم في أفغانستان وانصر إخواننا وأخواتنا المستضعفين في سوريا وفي اليمن وفي فلسطين يا رب العالمين اللهم فرج عن علمائنا والمظلومين في السجون اللهم فرج عنهم يا رب العالمين ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون فذكروا الله العظيم الجليل أذكركم واشكروا على نعمه أزدكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تسمعوا وعقيم الصلاة <تصفيق>